Right, 2009, question two, double integration over plane areas. 20 marks with three parts. First part's fairly straightforward. There's a, a double integral, which is x simple just now, but it suggests changing it to, to y simple because as it stands just now, the y integral is a bit difficult to do. So that just means consider the area under integration and then switch the coordinates in order to change from vertical slices to collecting horizontal slices. Right, so here we go. There's the center we need to change around. So there's the X simple part just now, and there's that complicated root in the denominator that's going to be difficult to do. Right, so what you do here is just consider what this graph looks like. So the graph's going to look like this. Y is going from root X up to 1. So draw the graph of root X and the graph of Y equals 1. Graph of root X, and it's been collecting, collecting these vertical slices along the X's from 0 to 1. Now, the same graph then, only collecting horizontal slices which means I'll have to change that around to x equals y squared, and the y's will collect them up from 0 to 1. So put them a little bit around then. So the y's are going to collect from 0 to 1, and the x's are going to go from the 0 to the y squared of now that horrible root, as far as x is concerned, is just going to be a harmless little constant. So that little part of root, in fact, you can just take that right out of there. So let's just put it over there out there just now which means that you're left with simply an x to integrate up. So that's a half x squared going from 0 to y squared. Right, well, <clears throat> take that half out. and leave that part underneath there alone just now. Then, the top is the derivative of the bottom, so you can use substitution. Just let u equal that whole part inside the square root. So the derivative is 5y to the 4th. That will cancel out the top. Change the limits while we're at it, so that's going to go up to u equals 21. So now I've got half of going from 20 to 21. y to the 4, that's just the square root of u. That'll go back up quite easily over 5 y to the 4. y to the 4s cancel out, so there's a 10. That's it, put the 10 in properly. Going from 20 to 21, just have du over root u. Now root u underneath, we'll just go back to root u on top, with the half, of course, dividing to make it a times 2. And then evaluate that twice, so you've got square root of 21, take the square root of 20. Done. Right, part two, using polar coordinates to evaluate this double integral. So changing from Cartesian to polar coordinates in two parts. The first part is just a circle centered in the origin. The second part is a circle centered somewhere else. So you'll have to discover exactly where that is. The main problem in both parts is just deciding what the limits of integration are. What the limits of theta are, where does it start, where does it stop, and what the limits of r are. Where does it start? Where does it stop? Right, so this one then. It's for part A here, it just says it's a quarter circle. So a quarter circle is centered at the orange, a quarter circle, and that circle's got a radius of A. Right, changing to polar coordinates. So x is going to be r cos theta and y is r sine theta. Where r, of course, isn't in to do with the radius. It's the distance from the origin to the point x, y. So that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, another thing is, when it comes to little area elements in here, those little area elements are going to be dx, dy in Cartesian coordinates, but in polar coordinates is r, dr, d theta. Right? So, going back over to here then, that's it. We've got the, ang the radius is going to go from 0 to a, and the angle angle theta is going to go from 0 to pi up in 2. y squared will be that r sine theta squared and x plus y squared, x plus y squared is r squared and then the area element r dr d theta. Right, now these parts are just independent from each other so you can spread out the iteration of it and put the sine squared theta with the d theta and then all the r's together, that's r to the power 5 altogether. Then a wee beta function here, that's just 1 and over 2 and it's even so it's pi up in 2 and then that's going to be a sixth of r to the sixth from 0 to a. So what's that going to be? Pi up in 4, and then we're going to have a to the sixth over 6. So we're tidying that up. Pi a to the sixth over 24. Right, this first one wasn't too bad. Now, the second one. For the second one, we've got some other circle. Right, we're going to decide exactly what's happened to that. Well, take that part over to make it equal to 0, and then complete the square in that. Now that means there's an extra a squared there, so I'll be an extra a squared on the other side. So that's a circle centred at A0, which means that the part of the first quadrant is a semicircle then. Now you have to decide then, what's that semicircle going to be? Well, theta is still going to go from 0 to pi up in 2, but what about R? 
well, you could do it by a little right angle triangle. That distance across here is 2a, so that length there would be r 2a cos theta. That's one way of doing it. Or you could go back to your original expression and then replace them with all the parts. x squared plus y squared is r squared. 2ax is 2ar cos theta. Factorise that, and then you get the two parts. Either r is 0 or r is 2a cos theta. Either way around, you get the same limits. 0, 2, 2a cos theta. Then putting these bits in as before, and then the area element r d r d theta. Now this time there's going to be a theta to get carried over to this. So I've got that sine squared theta d theta just now, but that's probably going to have to wait for a while because I've got my r to the 5 dr. So for that first part, I've got my sine squared theta, which is just going to have to wait. And that r to the 5 will be a sixth of r to the 6th from 0 to 2a cos theta d theta. So I've got a sixth of... Again, that sine squared theta will have to wait, and that's going to be cos to the power 6 theta, and also 2a to the power 6. Now, 2a is 64, so that's going to be 64a to the 6 over 6. Then, this part, well, there's a wee beta function, so I've got my 64a to the 6 times, that'll be 1, that'll be 5 times 3 times 1. They add up to 8, so it's 8 times 6 times 4 times 2. They're both even, so it's pi up in 2. And now it's just a case of what will cancel out? Well, let's have a look at this. That 8 will go into that 8 times. That could take out the 4 and the 2. That leaves another 2. So you've got 5 pi a to the 6 over 2, 6, 2. That'll be 24. And there, that's like that. Right, part 3 now. A double integration over an area which is bounded by curves. And this curve in an area is neither x nor y simple. So it's suggesting making a change of variables which will transform the plane in such a way that the bounds of the area will be transformed into horizontal and vertical lines. Now in carrying out that um, substitution, you're going to have to use the Jacobian to find the ratio in which to change the area elements from x, y into whatever you're going to call the other ones into the u, v. Right, so here we go with this one then. Right, so what have we got here then? We've got this, but unfortunately we've got this bounding set of curves, which I don't actually need to sketch them, but we'll just draw a picture of them here. Right, so putting down the x and y so I can draw them. y squared equals x, well that's just a parabola sitting along that way, like the root shape. That's just going to be a slightly higher parabola, so with a 2 in it. That's going to be the x underneath, so that's going to be a hyperbola because it's that reciprocal shape, so there's that one there drawn now. And that one's just going to be again another one just slightly higher up. We're going to stick that, put that over there. And there's that awkward little area which is simple in neither of the directions. So we've had it with that. Now what about a change of variable? Well, if you divide by that x, it comes to a nice whole number. And if you divide by that x in the other expression, it comes to another number. Well, that's perfect then. That means I can you let u equal y squared over x, because then when I draw the graph of u along that particular axis, I'm just going to have two vertical lines going from 1 to 2. So that's that straightened. And the other two are okay straight away. They're both just numbers, so that's perfect. So v can just be x, y to the 4. No fiddling there. And that's going to be two lines going from 3 to 4. And there, there's that new straightened out area to be integrated over. That's easy. That's perfect. But I've got this. I've got dx, dy, and I need du, dv. Now that means I'm going to have to use the Jacobian to change it around. I really want du, d, x, y, but I don't have it expressed that way, so I'll have to find d u v instead. That's not the option because I don't want to change these. So the Jacobian, that's the determinant of the derivatives of first of all u with respect to the other two, and then of v with respect to the other two. Right, so start differentiating that then. So that first one's going to be x squared underneath, that goes to that standard negative over the x squared, and then the other one's going to be just by 2y. Now, v, well, let's just be y to the 4. And the other one will just be well multiplied by the power, so that's 4xy to the 3. Right, main diagonal minus main diagonal minus the other diagonal. So the main diagonal and the other diagonal, that's going to be 2y to the 5 over x. Well, they're both the same, so that's minus 6y to the 5 over x for the Jacobian of partial u by partial v, though. Not exactly what I wanted, because I really wanted it the other way around. So for this integral, to get du dv in, I'm going to have to do a slight rearrangement of the Jacobian because dx but dy is going to be 1 over that one because I really wanted the Jacobian with dxy on top to affect the change. And the two lines there mean, of course, I take the positive value. So I turn it upside down, take the positive value, and I've got that from a change of area. 
So x over 6y to the 5 u to be, and I'll need to put those limits back in. I scrubbed them away earlier, but I can remember what they were. That was 3 to 4 for the v, and 1 to 2 for the u. So 1 to 2, 3 to 4, that'll cancel down to take that 6 out. I've got x squared, y squared, du to b. Now I've got to try and figure out how to knit these bits together. What combinations of u's and v's will give me this? Well, 4 divided by 2 would give me a power 2 for y, and then that gives me an x underneath, which is perfect, because that gives me an x squared on top. So that'll do fine. So the change is going to be v over u du dv. Right, clear this wee space away here. We can get started now. No, we won't. Right, get that pen out. Where is it? Here, I've got a fresh pen. So I've got 1 sixth of 1 to 2 for u, and 3 to 4 for v dv. And they're both very easy. That first one's just log. Log n u from 1 to 2, and that's just a half v squared from 3 to 4. So 1 sixth of, and that'll be log n 2 minus log n 1, and that's just going to be 4 to the 3, three I mean 4 squared to 3 squared, so that's just going to be log n 2, and that's going to be 16 minus 9, so that's going to be 7. So 7 twelfths, log n 2, and that's it, time.